We're live. Shavu Tov. Shavu Tov. Difficult days. Very difficult days. Day 48 of the Omer. Two more days. And we will be in prayer for Shavuot. One more day of rectifying who we are. One more day to go to Hashem with our heart of hearts. And say, Hashem, it's been 49 days. Since you told us to count the Omer. I haven't counted anything. I haven't rectified anything because I've I've been so busy, I've had so much to do, and I I forget these things. But today I remind myself that um, on Thursday is holiday and it's Shavuos. And Shavuos, I know, is the day that we're all standing at Sinai and you're giving us the Torah and that's Ten Commandments. And so on the day, two days before, and I need to, I need to, I need to really apologize that I didn't do 49 days. You know, it's about COVID and it's about the things that are going on in the world. And you know how difficult all of this is right now you can't go shopping and 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 there there are just so many problems i really feel bad that i didn't do it but i know i should have and i know what shavuos means and this year shavuos is like really, really, really important because we can't go any place. We can't do anything. We're home. We're right there. And we really don't have a choice but to look at this. And to understand what is actually going on. It's hard, very hard to discipline yourself, to read. 49 days and to connect with 49 days of the Omer, to discipline yourself, to do it and to do it with intention and to do it with kavana and to do it because you have a unique opportunity to rectify things in your personality. There are possibilities that Hashem gives us in order to be able to do these things and rectify and make better our being to understand and to learn what 
is it that makes us a Jew? What is it that comes into our being and shows us who we are? That gives us the opportunity to connect to our Yiddishkeit, to our Judaism. I want to read you something from the Zohar. Uh, you know that, of course, I'm using the Soncino Zohar, the perfect, beautiful English translation. And I want you to understand that all this stuff that you're being told by, that you can't understand the Zohar and it's too difficult. Yeah, it is difficult. And yeah, you can't understand unless you study. But it's worth it to study because the things that you do understand are so potent, even if you don't understand anything. And I understand maybe a drop, but from the maybe a drop, I get so much and I can share so much that it's like reading the Haggadah saying, if Hashem only gave me this, then it would have already been enough. So, Shavuot, 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 in my language, is a moment in time and I want to go back to that moment in time of the Parsha last week, Bamidbar in the desert. When you, as a person, as a Jew, either living in Israel, out of Israel, wherever in the world you might find yourself, you feel like you're in a spiritual desert. That in that desert, where do you go to find that part of the neshama of your soul that is connected by this incredible light of your soul to HaKadosh Baruch to God, to Hashem. When you open up your Siddur, your prayer book, and you begin to pray, that is the time when you can totally and completely connect and the desert turns into a flowering garden. Because at that moment, when you are forgetting where you are, who you are, but remembering that you are the Yiddish and Neshama, the Jewish soul that stood at Sinai, that heard the voice of Hashem speaking the first two commandments. The whole world heard the voice of Hashem. 
the incident will never, ever, ever reoccur. You were there, standing right next to me. We were together. You were there, your soul flew away from your body, right to the throne of Hashem. The fear, the awe of being in the presence of Hashem, receiving the voice of Hashem inside you. And Hashem said, the generations that are there and the generations that will come and the generations that are unborn, obviously you can say this in a hundred different ways, talking about me, talking about you, talking about all future generations were there at the very moment that Hashem spoke. The inside of your essence, your neshama, knows that moment. It connects to that moment every single year when we relive Shavuot. It's not about eating a meal. It's not about eating milk shake and then an hour later you eat flesh shake. You eat milk and an hour later you eat meat. It's about how you connect at that moment in those two days. And this year we have Thursday, we have Friday, we go straight into Shabbos. So Hashem is giving us two and a half days of looking at ourselves in the situation that he put us in the world. Looking at receiving and what that means to receive the Torah, to receive God's voice inside your being. Who are you? This is who you are. This is your essence. You are a Jew and you were there. And if you're a million miles, you think you're far away. You think you have nothing to do with it. You think it doesn't concern you. Think again. Because your neshama knows who you are. Believe you me when I tell you I speak to you from the essence of my nishama, my soul, that is battered and hurt and ripped apart. For what? I have not done in my life. And what I so destroyed because I didn't do it. And how difficult it is for me 
knowing what I did and knowing what I didn't do and how I didn't behave and what I lost because I didn't do it. And what it's taken for me to come back, to come back to my own being after I lost. Because while I was in it, I thought that that was the way to go. I wanted to be part of another life. Other people. Not to remember. Not to be responsible, but my soul was responsible. Twice a year, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur to go to shul was quite enough. Not eating bread during Pesach and eating matzahs was quite enough. But that wasn't enough for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem. He wanted more. He wants more from each and every one of us. And don't believe for one second that I'm not talking to you. Or that he is not talking to you. Because if you really think everything that I tell you and everything that every Rav tells you. Rav, of course, like we're talking about the Rebbe. We're talking about the great, great sages of our time. We're talking about people like Rabbi Mizrahi. We're talking about people who are on a mission to create an atmosphere, to bring back to you an atmosphere of coming together. Listen. So prayer, we're talking about the Parsha Bamidbar in the fifth book of the Sonchino Zohar, 120b and 121a. So prayer is made up of both action and speech. And when the action is faulty, Speech does not find a spot to rest in. Such prayer is not prayer. And the man offering it is defective in the upper world and the lower. The main thing is to perform the act and to give utterance to the word in coordination with it. You understand that? It's language that we understand. This is perfect prayer. Woe to him who spoils his prayer, the worship of his master. Of such a one, scripture says, when ye come to appear before me, yea, when ye make many prayers in the lower world, I will not hear. Observe this. Both upper and lower worlds are blessed through the man 
who performs his prayer in a union of action and word, and thus effects a unification. And so, with the conclusion of the prayer said standing, a man has to assume the appearance of one who has departed this world, in that he has separated himself from the tree of life. Now he has to be gathered toward the tree of death and fall on his face and say, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift my soul, as much as to say, Before I gave thee my soul in trust, now I have effected unification and performed act and word in befitting manner. And I have confessed my sins. Behold, here is my soul, which I surrender to thee completely. A man then must look at himself as having departed this world, his world, his soul, having been surrendered to the region of death. This is the reason why word and action in prayer are the complete surrender of your soul. Exactly the way we surrendered our souls to Hashem when He gave us His voice, when He spoke the Ten Commandments. After the first two, we said to Moshe Rabbeinu, to Moses, you speak to us because we can't listen to the voice of Hashem. We will surely die. When you pray with the voice, the correct voice only. Not the blah, 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 blah voice of every day, but the voice that comes from inside your neshama, inside your soul, that cries to Hashem that asks forgiveness, that talks about gratitude and thanks Hashem for every moment of life, for every good that you have in life, for every action that you do that is not correct. And yet, he gives you another chance to come to him and confess to him. And nobody needs to hear you. And nobody needs to know what you say. To daven is not to scream. Rabbi Shimon says, Silence when you daven, when you pray. Why? Because when there is blah, 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 how can you possibly connect to the inner voice, to your soul, which has nothing to do with your heart? Because the mind 
Hashem's face connects only to Hashem. Halev, the heart, does not rule the mind, but the mind rules the heart. And with your mind and with your inner voice and with your connection to that inner voice, you supplicate with your word, with your action, and you ask, Hashem, you gave me Torah. You gave me mitzvot. You gave me 49 days of looking at myself, seeing myself, working on myself, understanding my shortcomings, understanding that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not doing my heart's desire, which is to cleave to you. Because the neshama wants only to cleave to Hashem. The neshama, the soul, knows where it comes from. Who made it? Who is its master? Knows how to return. Wants only to do good things. Knows when it does bad things. Knows when it eats treif and doesn't eat kosher. Knows when it creates acts that are so totally anti-Torah. If you do nothing but hear the two commandments, the first two that Hashem gave you, You know everything because your neshama, your soul, knows everything. And before you came to this world, everything that there is to know, you were taught. You chose. I chose to forget. I chose not to do. I chose to go against my choice. As it was my choice to return. As it is my choice to not only return, but to share my return and to share with you and give you of me what my neshama tells me I have to do in order to rectify the things that I've done in my life to take me away from the road that I knew as a child I needed to travel. My, re my memory, my most beautiful memory of my life is when I was a child growing up in Germany. My parents are survivors. We lived in Germany until I was 16. And every day, her maid took me to school in the morning and I would pass 
the living room and I would see my father standing wrapped up in his talus and filling praying and that memory of seeing my father stand at the window with his siddur covered with his talus my life I see it in front of my face, in front of my eyes. And when I walk past my living room, I look and I see my father. And I see his connection after five and a half years of concentration camp. To HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to Hashem. And I remember what I wanted to forget. For years, I wanted to forget. And I remember when I was little, and my father would take me to show. And he would take me underneath his talus. And I would put my hands around him. And I was so little. And I would feel him. And I would sway with him. And I would hear his voice. Singing the prayers. Jonas. Jonas. Was singing. And I felt so powerful with my father. To me, he was the greatest man living in the world. And I wanted to forget. I wanted to be different when I came to America. I wanted to not remember all the crying in my house i didn't want to remember any of the stories i heard from all the people who came to my house who suffered so so much i wanted to be american i wanted to be like everybody else and for years, for years, years of my life, I was like everybody else with an ashama, with a soul that was crying. With a soul that wanted to connect, that knew who she was that didn't give out word what was inside that wanted to be something else and you can try and i did But then Hashem says, Dayenu, it's enough. I've given you what I've given you, and this is it. And at that point, when I lost my daughter. I was told she insisted in her will on cremation. And I knew that that was 
horrific. And there was nothing I could do about it because I didn't teach her. I didn't let her know. I didn't make anything a priority. There were other things that were so much more important. So much more important. And I realized, what have you done? And there is no way that you can go back even if you get it in a situation like that. It's final. But then you have to look at who you are. You have to look at what you are. It's not 49 days that you look at yourself. It's a stretch of your lifetime that you gave away, a stretch of your life that you closed up the fountain, that you dropped every ounce of your blood and you threw it. And then what? And then you come to Hashem, and you pray from the bottom of that pit of your own personal Gehinnim, your own personal purgatory. And you say, how do I come back? How, after all this, will you take me back? Will you give me the kayak? Will you give me the strength to come back to you? So Hashem gives us shvuz. He gives us Ten Commandments. He puts us into the desert. He takes the entire 12 tribes, all 603,550 Nishamat, and 22,300 males. of the Levites. Now, his people. And he says here, this is for you. This is your Torah. This is your it's Chaim, this is your tree of life. This is the way, and this is what you need, and this is your blueprint of your existence. I put my spark into you. You're part of me. And you can imagine being part of Hashem. And your neshama is part of Hashem. And we throw it away. And we make nothing of it. And we don't listen to the voice. And we don't listen to commandments, and we don't pray and act and give utterance 
to the words in coordination with our Nishuman knowledge. You think you don't know because you don't study. You think you don't know because you don't go to shul. You think you don't know because you don't keep kosher. You think you don't know because you go out with Goyim. You think you don't know when you ride on Shabbos, when you walk around half naked. Okay, you think you don't know nonsense. You know everything. You were taught everything. You came to this world with it all. You know. Two angels came with you. One Yetzahara, the evil inclination. One Yetzahato. All your life, they fight with each other for supremacy. Think about it. Think about it. Think about which one of the two is supreme in your life. And if it's the Yetzirah Tov, then you're a very, very, very lucky person. If you can actually say that, Gan Eden is waiting for you. Paradise. I could never say that about myself, but I'm working on it. And I got to day 48, counting every day and trying to rectify. And I will come to day 50, sure with my heart broken, begging Hashem to once again give me his commandment so I can do better. And so between Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, I'll try so hard to get better to do more, to give more, to, to achieve more for my neshama, for his spark, to try harder. Not how much ego can I put into my life and how great can I be? And how does my person have to be? Ah, wow. Those are other people. They have done horrific things. They have used their station. I, I read things today, I heard things today that broke me into pieces about rabbi. Just because somebody said that doesn't mean they are. And it doesn't mean that it's true. You know, when you know that it's true, when you suffer, 
when you suffer for the things that you've done. And when those things make you look at your life and make you realize what you have to be in order to deserve that Hashem's spark is inside of you. I wish you Chag Sameach. I wish you to come and connect in these days of quiet with the words of Torah, with the words of the Ten Commandments, with the action that is needed to observe the words of Hashem. I bless every moment of each of your existence as a Jew to find your way, to find that intimate part of your neshama and connect it to a Kajbohu for life, for joy, for health, to the tree of life. Chak Sameach. Receive Torah with the internal knowledge that it's the greatest gift that you could possibly ever receive in your life. Internally and with everything that it entails externally. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. To each and every one of you, anywhere and everywhere on this globe. Amen, Bill.